Hi, everyone. Uh, so I believe I only have uh, 10 minutes, so we're going to jump right into it. My name is Tom Vase. I come from the traditional trading environment. You guys heard me on a panel a few minutes ago. Uh, these are all of the uh, events that I put together, understanding Bitcoin conference on Confiscatable, the financial summit. Uh, check those out. You can like Google me and find my YouTube channel for the rest. So um, this is a presentation I started doing recently, and it's called basically uh, Bitcoin. It will be only one. Uh, basically, it will be the one blockchain standing. Uh, this is me putting all of the other altcoins in a four Venn diagram. Uh, and I'm going to get to the last couple of slides because I only have 10 minutes and all the slides were just me adding them. So this is where I talk about the importance of proof of work and why proof of stake will fail. Uh, this is where I talk about uh, how the current Bitcoin core developers have been doing it since they were 15 years old and continue to do it today. Uh, I talk about hard money. Uh, which we're also going to skip. And then I talk about individual coins, like why Litecoin can't compete with Bitcoin, how Ripple, uh, the price of the chart of Ripple is exactly like the chart of Diamonds, and uh, some of the other insanity that we have seen. Uh, skip that. Talk about privacy and why Monero will not be able to compete with Bitcoin. Oh, that slide is actually interesting. Uh, this is how all of these altcoins basically start. Hey, I just came up with an interesting uh, piece of encryption and uh, cannot be backwards compatible with Bitcoin. And when the answer is no, you have a shitcoin. And if you don't, you will have a future shitcoin. And uh, skipping the rest, Zcash and how it's running out of money for its developer fund. Uh, how Dash was just a scam from the start. And... Uh, how Steemit is totally useless and how ridiculous their white paper was. Uh, SEC versus ICOs. Uh, liquid sidechain is going to actually help. Uh, oh, wait. That's a cool slide, too. Uh, the insanity of Ripple and my never-ending fight with the Ripple army of the brain dead. Uh, and uh, I have episodes on that. Uh, we're going to skip all the Ethereum stuff because that's just an unscalable mess. And we're going to move on to my brand new slides, which I put together yesterday uh, when I learned that both Roger Veer and Craig Wright were going to be here. And this is basically, this was not part of my original slide because I felt that uh, Bitcoin forks were not even relevant to the discussion because they are a lot, for me, they are more similar to OneCoin and BitConnect. Uh, but we are going to talk about this current dumpster fire and how close they are to straight up Ponzi's. Uh, so here we go. Uh, I don't even know what Bitcoin Hex is. That's a really in between a straight up Ponzi scheme and the Bitcoin fork. So let's go straight into the Bitcoin forks. Uh, the original Bitcoin fork took place on um, August 1st of two years ago. And um, I believe on its second birthday, I pointed out that uh, holding your money in the Ukrainian currency uh, would have given you a better store of value than buying into uh, Bcash from day one. It all started so well. They had a great team. Roger, McAfee, Jian Wu, who's now been fired over that mess. And of course, uh, we have our breakups. Uh, this is uh, Roger and uh, 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 Fake Satoshi and uh, Calvin Air all working together until until here come the fork wars. I did an eight hour uh, live stream straight uh, covering uh, the breakup of uh, uh, Bcash into uh, big, uh, uh, what, what do you call it? BCH ABC and BCH BSV, uh, all of the usual characters. And here come the lawsuits. This is uh, uh, this is Craig Wright suing anyone that happens to call him a fraud. This is the one against Peter McCormick. Uh, so that's taking place uh, right here in the UK. Uh, this is uh, the court case uh, by Kleiman against uh, Craig Wright. And this one had very interesting uh, outcomes where it says right here, there's a clear and convincing evidence that Dr. Wright's non-compliance with the court's order is willful and is in bad faith, knowingly producing fraudulent trust documents and giving a perjurious testimony at the 
evidentiary hearings. This is right from the court case over in Florida. Uh, what else did we learn from that? This is facts. This is evidence. Uh, Craig submitted this fraudulent email to the court. It was perpetually sent in 2012, uh, but the signature shows it was actually faked in early 2014. Again, some facts from the case. Uh, here is another document. This email was blown apart ages ago, uh, but the BSV fans still seem to think that it is legit. Uh, this is more proof that there were fraudulent emails. Uh, in addition, there is clearly proof that the blog posts that talk about uh, him creating a cryptocurrency uh, in 2008 were uh, altered in 2015. Uh, Mr. Wright appears to have edited his blog dated 2008 in 2015 to make it look like he was writing a cryptocurrency white paper at the time, while a 2014 snapshot of the blog does not include that cryptocurrency comment. Uh, here is uh, evidence that was exposed of the faking of David Kleiman's signature as came out as part of that case as well. Uh, you can see Dave Kleiman's actual signature right there. And uh, this was in the documents, and then someone just started looking around the web, and it's like, oh, it's the auto fund that creates that exact signature. And finally, this brings us to the comparison and of these Bitcoin forks. I don't even like to call them by any names. I kind of like calling them fake Bitcoin 1, fake Bitcoin 2. But we really shouldn't even have to talk about fake Bitcoin 1 and fake Bitcoin 2 because these are, this is basically the path of all of the Bitcoin forks. And there are certainly more than two fake Bitcoins. Uh, this is another chart, but in reality, you don't have to really follow that. BSV isn't even on here. I guess it wasn't even important enough. Uh, but altogether, there are 20 plus uh, forks of Bitcoin, what well, I like to refer to as fake Bitcoin. And how do you know this? Well, it's very, very simple. Let's look at the value. We're gonna, uh, I want this slide to last through time, and therefore it is not denominated in USD, it is denominated in potential future uh, unit of account, which is Bitcoin, though in the future it will probably be a Satoshi or a Bit. So we have a Bitcoin, and uh, fake Bitcoin 1 happens to be 97.5% cheaper and uh, fake Bitcoin 2 is 99% cheaper. So if someone comes to you and says they have a better gold, is that gold 99% cheaper than the current gold? And then what do you say? What about the security? Well, uh, Bitcoin um, has the mining power, the amount of energy used to secure Bitcoin, the hash power, is now the size of a small country. I think it's somewhere between the Czech Republic and Austria. Well, what about uh, fake Bitcoin one? That one uses 98% less hash power. And what about fake Bitcoin two? 99.5% less hash power. Do you guys realize how easy it is to just destroy that chain if anyone actually cared about using their hash power to destroy that chain? Uh, what do I call decentralization? To me, decentralization is the amount of people that are running full validating nodes. This is why Ethereum can't scale. Well, uh, Bitcoin, it's hard to say whether it has enough full validating nodes, uh, but it's certainly, um, I know I'm running one, and uh, there are 85% less of those. Of course, this could be gamed, but both sides could be gamed. And it's actually laughable uh, how many uh, validating nodes there are on the uh, fake Bitcoin too. But, uh, uh, and if they were competent, they would already have two gigabyte blocks because they said that was coming back in July, and I believe we're already in October. And once it goes to two gigabyte blocks, then there'll probably be only one node, maybe, let's hope. Uh, so transaction scalability, Lightning will be able to scale us, and uh, with a double faster strategy on uh, fake Bitcoin one. I got about a minute and a half to go. Uh, what about the transaction costs? Well, the transaction costs on Bitcoin are decreasing uh, as we are uh, pretty scalable. And uh, SegWit, Lightning, if only the biggest wallet in the space, blockchain.info, would implement SegWit like they said they were ready for on January 1st, not this year, not last year, 
but 2017, uh, the wallet, the biggest wallet, still has not implemented SegWit uh, to lower the cost for their users. A uh, minor centralization risk. Well, in Bitcoin, it's very low. Mining is decentralized. Uh, now there is so much, so little hash power, and larger blocks increase minor centralization. And uh, on fake Bitcoin too, it's a lot worse. Uh, the dev quality. Well. I, I know the developers of Bitcoin, and they are very smart people. Uh, I have no idea who's programming in, uh, on fake Bitcoin 2, and it's pretty low on fake Bitcoin 1. Governance, soft forks, and the users with full value nodes are the governance. Uh, fake Bitcoin 1 already put in checkpoints, clearly showing that they are centralized, and God knows what the hell is going on. The other one, uh, commerce. Uh, well, uh, Bitcoin in commerce. If you compare Bitcoin with the traditional financial system, it's still pretty low. If you compare Bitcoin within the crypto space, it's incredibly high. It's all the commerce. No one uses the other chains. Um, it's, uh, again, borderline laughable. Offline transactions, Bitcoin has that. Uh, so if internet goes down in your country, you can still use it. Uh, secure uh, commercial wa uh, storage. Well, we have cold cards and other uh, very good storage ways to protect your Bitcoin. And uh, financial market inclusion. That's kind of important. We have futures, uh, we have uh, options, but like unless it's the CBOE doing those options, I left them out. The ETF is probably coming, and uh, I don't hear anybody talking about including fake Bitcoins in the traditional space. That would confuse people even more. That's it. Uh, oh, last slide, sorry. Giacomo Zucco, one of my great friends, and he tried to explain why this is happening. Uh, when people said, um, why am I, uh, I'm not malicious, I'm not scamming anyone, and Giacomo said, no, that's unfair. I don't accuse all of you of being liars, only the leaders. Many of you are just stupid. And that reminded me of my, one of my favorite George Collin lines. Uh, think about how stupid the average person is, and then realize that half of them are stupider than that. And uh, believing in fake Bitcoins, I believe, takes you there. Uh, so once again, this is the story of fake Bitcoins. Uh, thank you so much for listening. And uh, check me out on YouTube. And uh, those are the events that I put together. Thank you, guys. Thank you.